You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Make sure to click the like button, smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Get comfortable, grab a bottle of water, and back to you, AK. This is Hannah, AK Debris, London. I'm not paid by anybody. And I'm gonna always speak the truth, even when it goes against myself. In the past, I didn't know how to feel about MBS. Especially after the Khashoggi situation. And I know a dude personally, but let me not say that. I don't want to put a target on my head. What up, Ghana? I know I'm off of Snapchat, you know? Cool dude. He's a YouTuber. I watch him. He was supposed to be the guy. <laughs> what happened to Khashoggi was supposed to happen to him. Except, see, Khashoggi was a good boy. And this this, this is what we're going to speak about. I'm starting to like MBS. And I'll tell you like this. If you guys from Saudi know him, Nahi, he's an actor. But he's been going around doing charity work for the love of it. Not the fake philanthropy like Walid bin Talal. No, no. Real charitable. He goes down, he speaks to the people. His own money. He let others on his tutor who got money pay for the real life charity work. Humanitarian. He was interviewed and he gave credit to MBS for personally making financial contributions in secret to a lot of these people that he would post on Twitter. And quiet. And I respected that. A lot of times, my whole life, I did not really like the the Saudi royal family. And in the past, I've had plenty of reason. But I believe you should speak the truth. And even if your enemy, they're not my enemy, but even if an enemy of yours does something respectable, something honorable, you got to give it to them. Here's a couple things that I can't deny. And even Ghanem, who opposes MBS and his dad. And I'm going to tell you how he was going to be Khashoggi first, before Khashoggi. Here's a couple things we can't deny for MBS. This charitable work that I found out not through him himself, or one of his puppets, or a propaganda I found out through a source I trust. So I respect that. Two, before MBS, I'm not going to speak about him giving freedom to the people. That's obvious, and we'll speak later. But equality. Almost, really, but some a form of it. Before King Salman and MBS, being a royal family in Arabia made you above the law. You can... Pop somebody broad daylight and not do a single day in jail. After MBS, public execution of a Saudi prince. For the first time, a prince get treated just like a regular person when they take somebody's life. There's a lot of lives taken. Where... <laughs> Nothing ever happened, because it's a prince. So I respect that. A third thing is obviously the freedom and stuff. He stripped the religious police of their rights and authority. I got videos coming where I speak about those guys and the harassment. and, and They ruined my childhood. And the negative effects 
the super strict clerics and the, and the scholars had on the people and their minds and their life and and all these extremist ideologies, they were directly responsible for it. Make no mistake. And he admitted to that. And he mentioned the fact that I've been speaking about for years. That his other people can speak. That when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in the 80s, specifically 1979, these clerics were abused by the government to spread this extremist-ish ideology to convince people to go fight there, fight on behalf of the U.S. People came from all over the world, not just Saudi. Later on, Al-Qaeda and all that was founded there by their guns, their money, their training. He admitted to that publicly when he was asked about Wahhabism. He said, what is that? He said, Islam has always been moderate. This Wahhabist stuff, this this is where it came from. He left the U.S. speechless. Because they couldn't. This this was when the U.S. was like um, Joe Biden. Saudi Arabia's a pariah. I'll make them a pariah. Man, go back to bed. How about you leave Bitcoin alone? Or take the, 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 the hands off the neck of Bitcoin. MBS likes Bitcoin. So f- four reasons. <laughs> MBS, we're going to be good friends. My boy. My dude. Habibi, is he corrupt? They're all corrupt. But he laid off the corruption. See, forever Arabia used to be ruled by older men. His dad is technically the one who's king. He's just the crown prince. But word on the street is, little birdie told me, that his dad has um, Alzheimer's or dementia. And his dad always kind of put the, gave him the, 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 and he just laid in the background and take pics. But apparently his dad's dementia is worse and, and his dad is now just hospital bed in the, in the mansion. He's one running the show. At first, I didn't know how to feel about him. But time after time, I start to like dude. I gain a little respect for him, even when I oppose him. The Khashoggi thing, Biden went talking crazy. I don't know if he he wrote these words or I don't know what they were thinking. Because this happened in Trump era. And Trump said it ain't our business. It's not a U.S. citizen. I mean, it was a U.S. citizen. Oh. He wrote for the Washington Post. Ooh. But do we, was he also Saudi? Yeah. So. Listen, when you step foot on the embassy, let's say German embassy, you're U.S., for example. You're in the U.S., You step foot inside Germany embassy in the U.S., this embassy, the ground, once you step foot in, you are now governed by German law. Diplomatically, that's how things work. So you step foot in the Saudi embassy, Saudi law. Ah, now let's talk, let's keep it real. Since we keeping it real all the way today. These guys were so upset about what happened to Khashoggi. Technically, technically. It happened in Saudi territory. Governed by Saudi law. Governed by what? 
Saudi law. Meaning what? Meaning what crime are you talking about? They shouldn't have even hidden it. And I'm not saying it was right. I'm not saying it was wrong. Of course it was wrong. I never liked that that stuff. But where were the where were all these good people? Oh, Andrew Tate is dangerous. Bitch, what about Xi Jinping, ho? Nothing quiet. Andrew Tate is dangerous, but you got nothing to say for Xi Jinping with the slave camps. You quiet. This is unacceptable. They murdered a journalist with a sword. They cut him up. What about the thousands of people? Every time you go party Friday, and I say this to people, they look at me like I'm crazy. Oh, I'm crazy? Listen, bitch. Every Friday, what should I drink today? Should I drink beer or should I drink hard liquor? Bitch, there's someone getting chopped as we speak. Is there crime murder to get their head chopped? Sometimes, sometimes it's being a political dissident that won't shut up. Like a shogi. Every Friday. I tell people, like, why would you show that? Bitch, tell that to the younger me. I seen so much executions that I can pick favorites. I got a favorite. I got two. My favorite one was with three guys at once. Next. Next. Where were you then? They still happen. But nobody cares. So why care now? Is all I'm saying. The answer to that is pretty selfish. Not that I disagree with it. But it's because he's an American citizen. Who wrote for Washington Post. There's a lot of non-American citizens who wrote for papers trying to do more, more freedom fighting than Khashoggi was. In fact, this would turn my opinion on Khashoggi. Khashoggi, so let me tell you, my vape, Khashoggi, my friend, used to be their boy. He used to live in Saudi Arabia, and if you live in Saudi Arabia and you want to be a journalist, your only option is to be a puppet instrument they can play with. As they please. You can't say what you want to say whenever you want to say. You can't just speak your mind however you like. You go to jail like that. Or worse. Khashoggi. Oh yeah. When you are their boy. Here's the thing about Arabia. Whether it's the government or just people, they're the best allies to have and the worst enemies to have. When he became an enemy, you see what happened to him. Same mentality at the top that's down here. Even me when I beef. But when they're ally, what was he getting? Millions of dollars. When you become an instrument for them, they pay you good. Millions and millions. The type of money that will make you sell your soul. And sell your opinion. (laughs) So Khashoggi's opinion used to be paid for. Sometime after King Salman, I guess his conscience suddenly woke up. He decided he got integrity now. Ugh. Even when he critiqued them, my friend that I mentioned, Ghanem, he critiqued Khashoggi. He was like, stop playing both sides. You're a coward. You're, you're a fucking coward. He'll, he'll critique them and say that, oh... I want to thank the custodian of the two holy mosques while critiquing. Are you stupid? Why why fake it? You want to be a critic? Be a critic. 
But don't play both sides. It's a dangerous game. There's a lot of outspoken critics in and out the kingdom. But when one of them used to take... So this, I'm pretty sure that this is how they seen it. We put millions in your pockets. And now we're trying to change the country to the future. Instead of helping the vision. Right? You going out there and you want to be a, a, a work against us. Not only that, you ain't slapping us off of YouTube or something. You write for the Washington Post? Motherfucker. When the, when the Saudis go on TV and media, most times directed outside of Arabia. They don't give a fuck about the people. <laughs> so when they get on TV, it's on Australia, 60 Minutes. It's for the outside world, not for the inside. It's for business. And they spend millions of dollars to these. They pay mind-numbing numbers on PR or media to write good things about them. They fly out all types of uh, journalists, big names. They have contracts that some of them get leaked. 100 million yearly for one journalist. And 500 million to this, just to say that, oh, he's leader of the new movement for the change. Which he is, but goddamn, they're spending crazy money. It's coming out the budget. And then you get on Washington Post writing, critiquing stuff. The thing that makes him special is that he wasn't some random white person. Oh, I'm just doing my job. Motherfucker, he was one of them for years, being paid their millions. He was hanging out with them. When he had been to love, when things were all good, he wasn't so bad. He employed him. They knew him. So this was like treason. Eh, they're spending 400, 500 million a month to, to clean up the image that's been tainted for years with 9 11 and all types of shit. And you, one of them, you go to the Washington Post to ruin all this effort. People remember bad more than they remember good. So you want to go destroy all this? Nah, he had to go. I'm not saying my opinion. That's, that's, that's what I think happened. He had to go. He was playing both sides. And he, he flipped. And he flipped doing the, the treason. Destroying all the hard work. Plus, let me ask this, Khashoggi. God bless your soul. Khashoggi, you speak for libertarian views and freedoms and stuff. Cool. I'm not saying that there is perfect freedom in Arabia. Not at all. I don't know what's what's what. But I'm saying this. Who allowed women to drive Khashoggi? Ah. Uh, who stripped? Because you were cool in the times when the, when, the, when the sheikhs and the clerics used to say woman driving is bad. You were sitting up there taking millions being a good boy. But now that there's freedom, now that there is, you know, progress, it's not perfect, but nigga, it's the best we get. It's Arabia. Come on. It's Arabia. You think of anybody else but it came on. You speak, okay, you speak that MBS seized the power and kicked MBN out, Hamid bin Naif. Let me tell you something. If anybody else of these royals took over, you think they would have let women drive? One. They would have removed the, 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 the barbaric, prehistoric, draconian laws that we have. 
You think they would have did that? Against critics or not? You think they would have stripped the religious police and the figureheads of their authorities and, and, and control, motherfucker? They've been, MBN been talking about he's anti-terror, fighting terror for years. What MBS did by removing these motherfuckers, this alone stops terror for years to come. Let's keep it a thousand. Right or wrong? Khashoggi didn't have a problem sitting up there for years while I was getting fucked. They, they robbed me of my childhood, dog. Khashoggi had nothing to say. He was getting paid then. But now that they let the... Huh, now you have a problem? He seized the power. Let him seize the power, motherfucker. In history, I don't know if you're stupid or what. But in history, since you like to read so much, yeah, you read a lot up there. When people want to get these rights that MBS gave, they don't usually just get given like this. People fight for them. People protest. People bleed. Casualties, all type of stuff. They never get handed out like he gave them to, to you. He made the whole royal family upset because these things kept you a sheep in your place. So yeah, he upped the antics on the critics and punishments because he knew that, listen, I'm going to give you freedom. I'm trying to help you out. Genuinely, in his heart, he wants to do good. And if you want to speak about MBN, because that was the only other option, him kicking out MBN, I'm glad he did, nigga. Matter of fact, I think it might have been MBN who ordered the Khashoggi execution. I think. I don't know. I don't know if MBS cares all what, what or knows about Khashoggi. He could be telling the truth. The royal circle, upper royal elite circle, the one, I don't know what it's called in English. This 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 authority of of royalty, the top top, right? With the king is on top, then the Diwan, then the rest. The people at the top, all of them, got enough connections and money to make what happened to Khashoggi happen. I don't think MBS would play with his name like that. And the Ministry of Interior, governed by MBN for years, after MBS, for his own benefit to take over, he exposed the fact that MBN was a coke addict. The guy who led the Drug Enforcement Agency in Arabia, the DEA, who were very harsh, they were giving out execution sentences to people, like left and right. If you smuggle something in Arabia, capital punishment, the, the word penalty. But there was a big black market. How did these get in? Smuggled? No, there wasn't smuggled. These diplomatic planes don't get searched. You heard about the prince arrested in Lebanon with three tons of captagon or something like that. They said enough captagon to supply the whole peninsula for a year. That's how, that's how they get in. They sell the drugs. The DEA they put is to arrest you cause, so you don't become competition. <laughs> it's the truth. MBN, we found out he's addicted to uh, Snow White pills, all type of stuff. It makes sense how cruel and harsh he was on the people. He's the one that put the dissidents and the critics in jails and gave them executions throughout the years, personally ordered them. 
And if I remember correctly, that happened. MBN got stripped of his power after what happened to Khashoggi happened. Why did he up the the pressure on the critics? Because back then he put Islam there to 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 deter you from it. Now he just told you straight up. The sword, it's honesty. Black people like Trump because he was honest. If he didn't like black people, he said, well, I don't like you, nigga. He didn't fake like he liked you and do dirty stuff. Like, I'm not going to say who. People want rather an honest bad guy than a fake friend. And I'm starting to like MBS. Because Arabia today, the next generation is going to be human. Not like me. My generation is damaged. Damaged. When you see them drifting and doing stuff, like, how are they not scared? How are they not scared? Well, let's see. You only started to care about this execution. Oh, that's crazy. When Khashoggi. For years before that, them and me. And we just seen so many executions. They didn't see so many heads get chopped off of the humans. Peter. Peter. Humans got their heads chopped off every Friday, son. Oh, I'm lazy. I forgot. Friday come. That's why I work so hard. I was reminded. All these heads chopped. You think they fear anything anymore? So I'm glad. He's not perfect. But the little change he did make, of course it's going to be good. Of course it's going to be bad. But anyone else at the royal family, I wouldn't think this would have ever happened. He's the youngest soul to rule over. And what I heard about the charitable work he was doing at the will of his heart, yeah, he robbed a little bit of money. Didn't the royal dude tell you in English? He went out and said, so what? <laughs> when he was asked about corruption, 50 million. What I'm trying to tell you is, so what? We did not invent uh, corruption. We stole $50 million. So what? We stole $50 million. Oh, I guess you're right. MBS got the power. He stole a little money. But then he got bored. He got rich. Okay. He bought the Leonardo da Vinci. Then what? Then he came back to the people and actually started charitable work. The older guys are more dictator-minded. They don't care what happens to you. Yeah, it's chop head. No one cared. No one genuinely wanted to put real change at the expense of them power being threatened a little bit. That's why even his critics respect this. And I got to be honest, I'm not paid by anybody. Nobody paid me. I used to have a different opinion. Shout out to MBS. Let me know what you think in the comments. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Ghana. So Ghana was supposed to be Kasogi before Kasogi. Anum is a YouTuber. For five years, he's been going at him, critiquing him hard. He gained a big following. I think he's funny. I agree with him most of the stuff. I disagree. It is what it is. But he's, he put, he speak the truth, one. And he's funny. I like him. He lives in the UK. And he's been active as an activist. Unlike Khashoggi, who played both sides. Ghanem is more from the streets. Even how he talk, he's more from the streets. He talk like I would talk in Arabic. 
you know? Khashoggi's a good boy. Making millions since the early age. Royal family. So, <sighs> word on the street is, this is what they claim. That, you know how they lured Khashoggi into the embassy? Apparently, some people from the Saudi government, or people who represent them, approached the coffee shop owner in London, UK. And they offered him $2 million, $3 million, maybe $4 million, And told him, just, just get this guy in. Just lure him in the shop. And you can go, and our guys will take it from there. And at first, the guy was like, I'll think. Four million, two million, hmm? That's good money. And they got the power, so it's not like a crime. It's not a crime when the guy's on top. <sighs> First he was down. But then he spooked. He's an Arab dude in the UK. He's like, no, 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 I don't want problem. And he went to the cops. And it became a thing. They said, damn it, I'll get you later. They eventually caught him and beat him up. I'm sorry about what happened, Ghanim. Keep making videos, though. They're funny, bro. Anyway, a couple weeks later, a short time after, Khashoggi got got an embassy, not a coffee shop. <laughs> the funniest assassination on planet Earth. But I really do think maybe MBS didn't even know. The close people to him were involved, but who knows if he ordered it. I'm just laying out the facts. Could have been him. Could have been one of his, his goons. You know, they write diss songs. Like they wrote a diss. I'll tell you a different video. But you'd be surprised to know that one of his immediate circle wrote the song. Still like him. Still the only guy, the only hope. All right. Hit like, smash, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Get in the comments. Let me know what up. I read them. And uh, yeah. Share the video if you like it, please.